Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where today's video is going to be Eye It or Buy It, I think number four, I don't remember, but basically this is the series where I look at new or recent makeup releases, generally with a very heavy bent towards eyeshadow palettes, and I talk about whether or not I might like to pick them up, and then you tell me in the comments whether or not you might like to pick them up, and generally we just have fun talking about pretty eyeshadow. If you're new to my channel, my name is Rachel, hello, I'm a homeschooling stay-at-home mom, and I love to play with colorful eyeshadow. I filmed this look and I'll link it down below for you if you're interested. If you like colorful content and would like to see more on your timeline, I hope you'll consider liking and subscribing because I upload about three or four videos a week. Alright, so I am going to pull these photos up on my computer and scooch to the side a little bit so that I can put them up here for you to see. I want to jump right in with a palette that I tried to buy already and I didn't get. It is the Sugar Drizzle Man I Love Frogs palette. Okay. This is an all shimmer palette, and it is full of these beautiful blue, green, purple, pink sorts of tones. There are like two really deep shades in here, and then a lot of lighter and then me more medium tone shades. And this palette is almost all, or possibly all, uh, duo and multi chromes. It's really beautiful. I recently, I think in possibly my last Eye or Buy It video, I was talking about how when I first started eyeshadow, I probably never would have been comfortable buying an all shimmer palette. And even now I do prefer my palettes to be more matte heavy with a few shimmer options because I feel like you can get a lot more dimension and depth when you layer on different mattes. Um, but a shimmer can make all the difference in a look. And so at this point in my journey, I'm comfortable considering an all shimmer palette if I know, okay, I am doing a look and I know specifically which shimmer I want and where to get it and I am at that point now where often I'll do a whole look and then I think I want the XYZ shimmer from the Hummingbird palette Moon's Eye, and I go grab that one. So it's a matter of being more comfortable with my collection itself and I actually tried to get this palette. It was releasing at 3 p.m. EST and so I set an alarm and I pulled up the website and I pulled out my bank card because I figured I think they're going to sell out pretty quickly. Um, and so I was ready to go. I kept refreshing my site until it finally popped up. Now. I wasn't planning on getting this palette because of the price point. It's almost $50, I think. I, don't, I think it's like $46, I don't remember. But then I saw on Instagram, the, um, the company Sugar Drizzle said, hey guys, we have some manufacturer seconds. And the only issue with these palettes is that a couple of the pans were overfilled. And then the cardboard packaging around the pan absorbed some of the emollients and oils from the shadow product itself. And so in a couple of the palettes, in a couple of the pans, or like around the pans in the packaging, there were these little oil spots. And it wasn't a big deal. Honestly, I think I've seen that in one or two of my own palettes, either over time or, you know, sometimes they ship a palette like that. Well, Sugar Drizzle was awesome about this because not only did they admit that it was technically a manufacturer second, but they also offered them for $26. When I saw that, I was like, okay, now that is something I can afford for a full palette of multi-chromes. That's an incredible price. And so that was what I was waiting for. I was on the site waiting to buy the manufacturer seconds palette. I'm like, I can do this. This can fit in my budget all as well. I got on the site as soon as it launched, I got the palette in my cart, made sure it was the right one, went to checkout, and they're like, you have to log in. I'm like, oh no, I don't have an account. So I, it took maybe 45 seconds to create an account. So I created an account, got to the shopping cart, entered my payment information, went to checkout, and they were sold out. Two minutes. It took me two minutes from when the site launched the product to me ready to hit buy. And that included setting up an account and entering all of my information. Two minutes. The manufacturer seconds were sold out. I closed my browser and went on with my day. Later in the day, I went to Sugar Drizzle's website or Sugar Drizzle's Instagram, and they said that within five minutes, all of the Man I Love Frogs palettes were sold out. All of them. So, I mean, that's awesome. Good job on this indie brand for creating something that clearly everyone wanted. The palette's really pretty. I think if I could find it secondhand, I would be very happy to buy it, particularly because it would be a lower price, probably. Um, I'm not going to buy the full price palette, but it is beautiful. If you go to their Instagram, you'll see some gorgeous swatches of all the different shades within each pan. It's really beautiful. Now let's talk about Glam Light. This is actually a slightly older release. because I mean, because I don't do these videos weekly, I'm pretty much always behind on something. <laughs> uh, the Frosted Flakes Glam Light Collaboration. The first time I saw this, and now I know that Glam Light was the company that really popularized the whole food-themed makeup or packaging. My personal taste, I don't really like that theme. I think it can be kind of tacky. Um, I've seen other companies do it too, and I'm like, oh. 
I don't want a, like, I don't want a taco or donut shaped palette in my collection. Not only does it sound like a nightmare to try to store, it's weirdly shaped and doesn't fit well anywhere, but I just think it's, it's ugly and I want my makeup to be pretty. It's, it's really a whole experience that you see a beautiful palette and you remember the colors inside of it and it inspires you to pull it out and do something pretty on your eyes. I want my packaging to be pretty. In fact, I just made a video, which I don't think is live yet, but it's basically talking about my favorite eyeshadow palette packaging. That's gonna be live soon. Anyway, I want my packaging to be pretty and so food themed packaging isn't really my jam. Um, but aside from that, the Frosted Flakes X Glamour collaboration they had a whole bunch of things. They had some lip stuff, they had some face stuff, they had a little bowl of cereal which was a loose highlighter I think. The packaging of that was really really cute. It's this little bowl um, and then on the top it looks like it's just milk with the frosted flakes themselves. It's very cute. It's very well done. But I want to talk about the eyeshadow palette. The palette itself is blue and orange. It's about one-third orange, two-thirds blue and People are actually quite excited about this because often you find a neutral palette with a pop of blue. This is more a blue palette with more than a pop of orange. And it's interesting because you might not think that cosmetic wise, blue and orange go together well. They're not easy to work together. In something like an eyeshadow look, you want nice blending and gradation. You don't really get that with blue and orange. They're too different. However, they can be done really, really well. Several people have made videos on this collection now and so you can go to different channels and see great inspiration looks for how to use these colors together. The shadows themselves I think are quite pretty. I like the range of blues. You go from light to dark, you've got a white, you've got a black, you've got lots of light and mid-toned blues and then a couple really dark blues. Um, and then when I've seen people use the dark blues, the one darkest blue is gorgeous. It reminds me of uh, the dark blue shadow within the Udenzai Hummingbird palette. It's just a deep oceanic sort of blue. Very, very pretty and very pigmented. Um, and then the oranges definitely seem to range from orange to peach. I think they're all really pretty. I think the shadows themselves are really pretty and they're glam light so you know it's a good formula. The very first time I saw this palette I was like mm, it looks kind of sporty like a sports team orange and blue and I wasn't super excited by it but then I saw some videos and I was thinking oh actually that's actually kind of cool. Like the shadows themselves are pretty colors and you could work them very nicely together. I'm on the fence about this one as far as whether or not I'm gonna get it. I think I'll just leave it in the back of my mind for now. So it's definitely a maybe. It's not a firm yes or a firm no. ColourPop is celebrating their eighth birthday and they are doing so by releasing a collection of Super Shock shadows called the Shock It To Me collection. Honestly, I don't know if these are all new shades or all old shades or a little of both and they're just put together in one little bundle. Either way, um, the picture of them is really beautiful. I think some of the Super Shocks are gorgeous. Like in this particular picture, I really want that berry and then the vermilion and then between the two, is there's like a pink shimmer. And then I want both of those blue shimmers towards the bottom. I want both of the green shimmers towards the bottom. And then I want that vibrant orangey yellow one. I think some of these colors are very beautiful. I personally am not interested in getting individual items, like really small things, because they just get lost in my collection. I don't think I would use them. And every single time I've gotten a palette that has a Super Shock in it, the Super Shock has shattered. I'm not super clumsy with my makeup. They sit in the cabinet until I pull them out to use them. I very rarely drop the palettes. I'm not really clumsy. So if I were, I would expect shadows to break, but I'm not, I'm not that bad. And, and yet every time I have a palette that has a super shock, wine and only child Tinkerbell, um, and one or two more that have had super shocks, they have broken on me. So I like the super shock formula. I think maybe I have a slight bad taste in my mouth because of that experience that it always ends up covering me and that's annoying. Um, and I do wonder if the Super Shock within these individual pots behaves a little bit better than within a palette. Maybe it's pressed down a little bit more firmly so it doesn't break everywhere. I don't know. I'm not going to get any of these, but I think some of the colors are really, really pretty, and I really like ColourPop's formula as well. So Okay, now this is something that I'm very, very excited about, and I fully intend to buy. Fully intend, add to cart, as soon as possible. That is the newest release from Udenzai, the Sulmane Palette 2. I think I'm saying that right-ish. I'm sorry if I'm not, but um, I wasn't interested in the first palette within the Sulmane collection, but this one, mm, this palette has is just everything that's right. Now let me talk about the collection first. The collection includes uh, the palette, 15 different shades of gel liner, which I 
think is a new product for Uden's Eye. Six different shades of blush, six shades of highlighter, and a makeup mirror in two different colors. It's very rare that I would be interested in having an entire collection. Now, I, I didn't say buy an entire collection, but just have it. <laughs> if I were to have an entire collection, this would probably be one in which I would be interested. I don't really care about the little mirrors, but the collection, like beautiful shades of blushes, beautiful highlighters, creamy eyeliners, which I use every time I do an eyeshadow look, and then a stunning palette. Mm. You guys, come on. This is beautiful, this eyeshadow palette. Let's talk about the eyeshadow palette. Let's just talk about it. Ah. This palette is beautiful. I love the variety of colors. I love, we've got creams, yellows, orange, berries, blue, green, aqua, silvery. You've got lots of cool tones, some warm tone, and a variety of not only colors, obviously, but also ranges. There are some really light shades, a couple of really dark shades. You've got a dark blue, a dark purple, and then a black. So you can deepen out any of the shadows in the palette. And there's a good variety of medium tone shades as well. I really like Odin's Eye Formula. I really love their shimmers. And this palette has some of the blue and purple that I love, but not too dark because I stay away from really dark blues and purples generally. Um, they're not the best colors because I have blue undertones, so they make me look tired, but these are more light toned blues and purples. And yes, there's a dark blue and a dark purple to deepen it out, but I only want one anyway, and I only use it in the outer corner. So this is like, this is a dream. This palette is beautiful. Also, I think it's like $32, which is really a great price for what you get. And I think that shipping from Uden's Eye to the States is $8 which really isn't that bad. I could be wrong about that. I haven't bought something from them in a little while, but um, I am absolutely 100% planning on getting this palette. My husband gets paid next week, so that's probably when I'll buy it. But oh, mm, the prettiness. Oh, it's so gorgeous. I can't wait to play with it. So this is a palette that doesn't interest me at all. This is the collaboration between Hip Dot and Cup Noodles. Let me go back to what I said about food themed makeup. Not really my jam. I mean, it's cute. I get it. Sometimes it can be done well, like the Frosted Flakes, um, the loose highlighter. That's cute. But it's more a novelty or a little piece to decorate your room. Maybe something cute and eye catching and conversation starting perhaps, but I just don't really want that from my makeup. I mean, unless it's a, unless it's packaging that is gorgeous, that would be fine. But novelty? or kitschy, I just, that's not my scene. But you know, that's me, not everyone. Some people really, really like, like for example, the glam light uh, food theme stuff. Some people love their pizza and their taco palettes, their cupcakes, stuff. like it's not me, but I'm not everyone. So anyway, the cup noodles collab with Hip Dot. I don't really understand this one. The colors of the palette itself, I do like the bright orange. It's, it's basically a neutral palette. It's got a little yellow, a little orange, and then the rest are just neutral tones. You could get a decent look out of these colors themselves. There is one light shade, a couple of medium shades, and then several darker shades. So you would be able to get a nice neutral look out of the palette. Um, and then there are a couple other things there, are like, it looks like lip glosses and whatnot. I just, honestly, I just don't get it. I don't think that it's unique color story-wise. There are so many neutral palettes on the market. This is not unique as far as the color story goes. So really, it's just collabing with cup noodles and making it look like a box of ramen. I personally have no interest in that. Like the color story doesn't interest me and I don't know much about hip dots quality. Um, and then the whole ramen cup noodle thing. I don't get it. I, I think some people are having fun with it, but maybe that's all it is. It's just fun. MAC Cosmetics is coming out with some waterproof eyeliners. They're supposed to last up to 12 hours. They're called Color Excess. Um, they have a nice selection of colors. We've got green, blue, red, orange, yellow, purple, white. I do think the colors are really pretty. I really like the cream eyeliners because I use them on my waterline all the time. Currently, I only have ColourPop. I would be tempted to try Uden's Eye because I really like Uden's Eye eyeshadow formula and I'm interested to try the liners. So I might throw a liner or two in my cart when I buy the Sol Monet 2 palette. I think that the MAC liners are pretty. There are, Again, there are a lot of colored eyeliners on the market. So I probably would be less interested in spending more money for a MAC product than just going to Walmart and getting a colored eyeliner that I can grab off the shelf. 
but that's just me. I think the colors are pretty, the selection is nice, and I mean, you know MAC is a well-reputed brand, so presumably it's good product, but I personally won't be picking any of these up. Okay, so this next one is actually kind of older news. It is from Clarity Cosmetics, and it is the Evil Mermaid palette. I have mixed feelings about this one. My first impression is, that's sort of a strange name, and then I see the packaging and I see like the mermaid's fish scales sort of um, detailing on top of skulls. And I go, oh, why with the skulls? <laughs> why, why, why just evil mermaid? I don't, I don't quite get that. I think just mermaid would have been a great name because mermaids have this lovely, ethereal, magical, um, fairy tale sort of feel to them. And then of course they have the connotations of oceanic sorts of colors with blues and greens and coral and seashells. So those sorts of things naturally come to a person's mind when they hear the word mermaid. And that would be a beautiful pairing with this palette because it's these gorgeous blue, green, purple sorts of tones. I don't know why it had to be an evil mermaid. I don't get it. My second thought with this release was, oh my word, look at these beautiful, beautiful swatches. They are gorgeous. The palette consists of five mattes, three duochromes, and one foil shade. They're all just really beautiful and the duochromes, like you can see several different colors. It's a really beautiful and aesthetically interesting palette. It's not for me though because I don't like the evil mermaid thing. I don't like the skulls floating around in the in the murky darkness of the water design. But also I stay away from the dark blue and purple shadows because they're not the best on my skin tone. I've said this a hundred times now. So this palette would look incredible on somebody who has yellow undertones to their skin. Um, Angelica Nikovic just comes to mind because she looks fabulous in everything that's blue because she's got yellowy undertones. I would recommend this palette as far as the color story and the, it looks like really beautiful quality. I would say go for it if you don't mind the packaging and you really like the colors and you have yellow undertones. You would probably look incredible in all of these shades. On me, they'd look neat, but they would also not really stand out or pop on my skin. When I do blues, I need to do lighter blues. So I think this palette's really beautiful, but it's not really the best fit for myself. But I mean, I'm still going to enjoy looking at other people using it. Juvia's Place is releasing a new collection called Nubian Earth. It's a very neutral collection. The palette goes from really light with what looks like a white shade and also several light buttery creamy colored shades to quite dark with about two really dark shades and like brownish blacks and then a range of mid-tone shades in between and there's one in here that looks kind of marbly like whitish brown sort of combo. The collection itself also includes six lipsticks and a couple of glosses. I I'm not really a lipstick kind of girl but I really think that these are beautiful. Honestly, I, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to get any of it. The palette is not me because it's, it's all neutral. I don't really care for neutral. The lipsticks are not me just because I don't wear a lipstick, but I can appreciate the beauty of the lipsticks. There's beautiful detailing and there are imprints on the lipsticks themselves. The colors are gorgeous. There's a nice range depending on what skin tone you might have from light to dark. These de definitely tend more towards dark, but you could get like neutrally sorts of shades. There's like a peachy pinky one and then there's like a caramel one and then a reddish one sort of berry and then one that looks like a deep maybe purpley black. I don't have my glasses on. My computer's so far away. Um, and the picture's small but anyway the lipsticks are really beautiful. They're aesthetically pleasing. If you like lipsticks and I know that Juvia's Place has a good formula overall then shoot go for them. It's not for me but that doesn't mean I can't appreciate how pretty it is. Violet Voss is releasing a Sunkissed Summer palette. Um, this one I think is actually kind of pretty. It it doesn't excite me enough to want to buy it. I haven't tried Violet Voss. I would be interested in trying them at some point if I were to find a palette that really caught my attention. I think this one's pretty. It's got, um, there are lots of neutrals. The whole top row is like yellowy, buttery, more skin toned neutrals. And then the bottom row is mauves, pinks, and berries. And uh, looks like there's a slight brown in there as well. I think the palette itself is pretty. I like that they chose to use more soft buttery yellows with the berry tones because they're going to complement one another nicely as opposed to like a, a lemon yellow with the berries. That would still be pretty but it wouldn't be as complementary and I think it wouldn't be as appealing to mass market. Most people don't want rainbows on their eyes so this is actually a really pretty palette and probably a nice option for people who want more wearable everyday looks. I think it's quite pretty. There's one shade in here that looks from the picture to be more of a glitter shade. I don't know if that is a pressed glitter or if it's just quite shimmery. If it were a pressed glitter for me, that would just be a, a no. I don't have any interest in getting palettes with pressed glitters, but I think the palette itself is really pretty. 
And finally, I want to talk about the Beauty Bay Technid Days collection. A lot of people thought when they were talking about this collection that it was going to be neon. It's not neon. They are bright, kind of Eastery sorts of colors, I think. I think they're going for a, like workable spring kinds of colors. There are two different, I mean, there are some brushes and looks like lip glosses. Then there's a five pan palette of the water activated eyeliners. Um, and I'm not gonna talk about those because I have zero experience with that kind of a product. So I, there's nothing I can bring to the table. I do wanna talk about the palette briefly. I think it's too small to be very usable. What I mean is there are so few shades and so much variety within the shades and colors. I guess you could do a yellow green look and you could do a pink purple look. You could do a yellow green with that light blue shimmer. You could do pink purple with the peach shimmer. I just think that the palette itself, while I do like a palette to have a lot of color options, you still need enough pans within the palette so that each of those color options has other colors that it can reasonably work with. And I don't see that in this palette. I mean, the colors themselves are pretty, but there's not enough to work with. Also, this palette really reminds me of the Beauty Bay Disney palettes that were, I think last year, the little six pans. Oh, the Jungle Book Bambi. Do you remember what I'm talking about? I think particularly the Jungle Book because in the Jungle Book palette, I see a green, a yellow, periwinkle blue. Like it, the palette really reminds me of that palette. Colors are definitely not exactly the same, but they are quite similar. And so if you, if you have the Disney collection, you probably really don't need the Technidays. And anyway, I'm not interested at all in that Beauty Bay Techni Days palette. I think where I am at this point is really excited to get the Sulmane 2 palette from Udenzai. And I think that that palette, like that palette excites me. A lot of other palettes I see or talk about are like, oh, that's cute. But the, they don't excite me. They don't get me going like, oh yeah, I, that looks beautiful. I can't wait to try that. I want to play with it. A lot of things that are released lately don't get that reaction from me, but the Sulmane 2 does. So that is the palette where I'm going to put my attention and my money and everything else I'm happy to talk about. I'm happy to look at. I am really happy to watch other people's videos because it's fun to see eyeshadow. It's fun to see eyeshadow looks. I enjoy watching and seeing what other people are doing with things, but I don't need to open my wallet for all of these things that I think are cute, but not really exciting. You know what I mean? Anyway, that's my video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed it. Please comment below with what your thoughts are. I would love to have conversation in the comment box with people who also enjoy colorful eyeshadow. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you may have, what you've picked up, what you're excited about. You can always give me recommendations for my next eye or buy it because I'm not always like right on time, but I just really enjoy looking at eyeshadow. So thank you very much for hanging out with me. I hope you liked the video. Remember to like and subscribe if you want to see more. And until I see you again, hope you have a great day. Bye. Defective palettes. The only thing that was wrong with them was that the shadows had been pressed down too. Was that the pans, was that a couple of the pans? The only thing that was wrong 